So speaking of crypto, connoisseurs from all over the world are going to converge in Nashville tomorrow for that annual Bitcoin conference. And remember that in a show of how politics is impacting the industry, that is where former President Donald Trump is set to deliver the keynote address. We're going to talk more about this with Anthony Pompliano, founder of Pomp Investments. And first of all, there's a keynote to talk about tomorrow. There's also the reaction that you're seeing in markets. What is Bitcoin in a volatile stock market? Why isn't it seen as more of a risk asset? Yeah, I think one of the interesting things is Bitcoin is the most certain thing in the world, right? If you actually go and you look at it, um, Bitcoin is computer code that is auditable by anyone in the world. And uh, regardless of what happens in markets, whether people want more Bitcoin, less Bitcoin, whether interest rates are high, low, et cetera, the software continues to execute exactly as it's designed. The reason why that's important is if you, it's the 180 degree difference than traditional markets, right? If you go and you look, when people want more dollars, we figure out how to put more dollars into the market. When people need more dollars, we put more dollars into the market. And so because of that certainty, what happens is in times of uncertainty or chaos, people flock to Bitcoin. And so you can see this over the last two weekends where we had political instability or political kind of chaos, people flocked to Bitcoin, Bitcoin's price went up. And so I think that certainty ends up being something on a global basis that people are starting to familiarize themselves with and put capital in. So speaking of politics, Donald Trump is, of course, speaking at this conference. We have another person on later, Anthony Scaramucci, of course, big buyer of Bitcoin, who says Kamala Harris is just as good for Bitcoin. Is Trump really the pro-crypto candidate? I actually don't think it matters uh, in terms of who is going to do what for Bitcoin or crypto. I think what is more important is that there is one side of the political aisle at the moment that realizes that this is a really important point for 50 plus million Americans. And so whether you call it pandering to them or they're actually going to do it, you're not gonna know that until after the election, right? And so one of the interesting things is Donald Trump is positioning himself as the pro-Bitcoin, pro-crypto candidate for sure. I think what the Democrats have to decide is, are you going to cede that point to Donald Trump? Are you gonna say, hey, you get to be the, bro, the uh, pro-Bitcoin, pro-crypto candidate, and we're gonna be the anti? I think actually what would be better for them and kind of the game theory that Bitcoiners have talked about for a long time is, no, you should just become pro-Bitcoin, pro-crypto as well, and therefore you take away that advantage that he has with that voter base. Um, and so we've seen this at the state and local level, right? We've seen states yeah. compete over these people, I do think it will come to national politics. And my expectation is that whoever gets into the White House will end up being pro-Bitcoin, pro-crypto, uh, because this is such a large voter base now that they're going to have to cater to them. I really, really like that point you just made. And we actually asked the CEO of Ripple about that. He attended the RNC, notably. He's also going to attend the DNC. Here's what he had to say about politics and Bitcoin. This should have never really become a partisan issue. I think all of us should embrace, embrace technical innovation. And these are technologies that truly can transform the, the cost and efficiency of financial transactions particularly. And so uh, our message is really that we as an industry want to be regulated. We want to have the clarity of that regulation. We as an industry want to be regulated. Is that something that the industry wants? I mean, when people are attending this Bitcoin conference, how many people? 30,000? Oh, there's going to be a lot. Yeah, okay. Tens of thousands for tens sure. Tens of thousands of people. They want regulation? I think that everyone who operates a business wants to understand what are the rules, right? One of the beauties of America is in a capitalistic society, there it's all about competition. Let me compete. But in order to compete, you need to know what those rules are. And so there's two schools of thoughts on this. Some people say, hey, look, all the existing rules already apply here and we don't need to change anything. But think about decent decentralization as an example. If you have a decentralized organization, how do you regulate that? What are the rules if you're the developer that's going to create that technology? So there's a lot of unanswered questions. I think that's where people are saying, tell us what the rules are, let us go compete. Mm -hmm. Now, what I do think is also really important is some other countries have rules in place. We may not agree with them or we may like them, but if other places get clarity and we don't have the clarity, now all of a sudden they have an advantage because yeah. entrepreneurs in those jurisdictions can go and compete before us. Right, and they set the standard in many ways, yeah. right? Well, the other thing too, you just, formed a new investment company. You invest in crypto, but you invest outside of crypto as well. What are you doing on a day like today? Yeah, so I tend to be very long-term oriented. I don't really like to trade anything in the short term. Are you buying a um, dip? So with crypto, we usually will buy the dip. Um, we'll buy Bitcoin. We've been buying uh, Solana over the last uh, year or so. Um, and really the thought process there is like, over the next five to 10 years, there's one major theme. If you get it right in finance, you're gonna make money. If you miss the theme, you're gonna be on the wrong side of the trade, which is the dollar is going to be devalued. We have seen the national debt go up with Republicans and Democrats, both in office, the Congress, Senate, and whoever's leading the um, uh, presidential seat, they have to continue 
to devalue that dollar. And so naturally getting into investments and holding for the long term, you should do pretty well. And so I think that people try to uh, make things a little bit too complicated. They're trying to pick individual stocks, et cetera. The United States of America does a fantastic job of giving us access to capital markets. Put your money to work, shut up, sit down, sit on your hands, don't touch it, and just let the asset prices go up. And so when you see that happening, whether it's crypto or stocks, really all you're asking yourself is how much volatility can I stomach, right? Both of them are gonna go up over the long run because you're gonna get a devalued dollar. The question is, can you sit there and see something draw down 60, 70, 80% and be okay? There's a lot of people who are sitting at home saying, I can't do that, mm. so they should probably go in the stock market. But there's a lot of people who say, you know what? I'm fine with that. And those are the people who are gonna go and buy these crypto assets. The election is right around the corner. Again, you just started a new firm. You, you may want to be starting putting money in new stocks. Do you think that there's a lot more volatility headed into the election? Do you wait for a minute so you don't stomach that volatility? The data definitely suggests that we get more volatility in the second half of election years. So I, I think that we would be dumb to kind of fight that trend. And I do think that we'll continue to see that volatility, especially if you just look, you know, we're only in the month of July and we've already had assassination attempts. We've yeah. seen the you know, president uh, candidate drop out, et cetera. Um, but I also think that asset prices end up not really being affected by presidents as much as people would like to say, right? So there's, if you go and you talk to Republicans, they'll tell you how bad of a job Joe Biden's done, stock market's at all time highs. Under President Trump, people were yelling and screaming about how bad of a job he was was doing, stock market was at all time highs. And so I really do think that the president matters for a lot of different policies, leadership matters, but when it comes to asset prices, the market tends to be much more insulated than people would like to assume. So Anthony, you're gonna head over to Nashville and attend the Bitcoin conference. Uh, your number one prediction for what news we're gonna get out of it. Yeah. This, this, tends, this conference tends to make news. Uh, definitely makes news. Um, so one of the themes over the last couple of years has been uh, people have gone there and then, uh, specifically nation states have said, uh, El Salvador being the first one, hey, we are going to embrace this asset. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, there's this rumor that Donald Trump is going to uh, call for a national strategic reserve of Bitcoin for the United States. What's interesting about that is if you call for it before you actually go do it, you're probably going to, as a country, buy Bitcoin at a higher price than uh, before if you had bought it and then announced it. Um, but I do think that uh, the United States at some point is going to create a national strategic reserve of Bitcoin. Uh, I do think that Donald Trump is likely to be one of the candidates, if not the candidate, to push that forward. Mm -hmm. And once one says it, I think that not only will you get that to become a popular narrative throughout all of U.S. politics, you also will see many other countries start talking about it as well. All right, good stuff. But uh, again, we have to be cautious of putting the cart before the horse as well. Anthony Pompliano, thank you so much, founder of Pomp Investments.